Hi there, my name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the North Star Horizon S100 bus system computer. To my knowledge, this is the first computer to come with built-in floppy drives, and we'll have to take a look at this one here. The drive door here doesn't seem to want to close. Like most S100 bus systems, it has an unregulated linear power supply. Unlike most S100 bus systems, it actually has a motherboard with some stuff on it. But unlike a modern motherboard that would have CPU and memory on it, this looks like it just has serial information coming in and out through these UARTs, and it has parallel input and output connectors. I noticed there are a few just straight up like hot wired. What's it called? Yeah, that? so this is fairly typical of what you'll see on an S100 bus card where people will um, create different jumpers for different settings for things like baud rate, um, number of stop bits, or various other things. So often in S100 bus, the IO ports that are in use will be mapped to different ports depending on how jumpers are set. And taking a look at the cards here, we have this VIO, which is a video card, actually. So it looks like the video is coming out of here, and it looks like it's coming out of a jack here in the back of the computer. So that's interesting. This is the first machine I've gotten that has built-in video. Hmm. Let's see, there's a disk drive connector here. Let's say I probably have to take this off to take the card out. Do uh, both of the drives have two cards, or are both of them managed by just one card? It looks like both of them are managed by just one card. Hmm. Um, this drive controller card is a Phase Lot 2 dual density controller by Microcomplex. Now, what's interesting is I know that Northstar made their own controller card for disks, so it's interesting that this particular version has a card that's by a different manufacturer. Maybe the original owner just decided that the original card just it wasn't enough for him. Yeah, we could actually look that up. Maybe the original is single density and they upgraded to dual density, or I don't really know. What does a single or dual density mean? Uh, dual density ha can store twice as much on the disk. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Uh, this is some sort of memory card. Okay, this is a god belt card. Uh, does it say how many, like, uh, how much uh, memory it's got? Uh, I'm not sure. And so the switches over here are for setting the different address ranges associated with the memory. I assume that these are preset to match up with this memory card. Oh, and this is a natural North Star card. So I'm going to guess that the computer came with a 16K of RAM, and then the user added this either at purchase or afterwards or something like that. Let's see, what else do we have here? Ah, here's an actual North Star computer's Z80 processor board. So this is the main processor board. It looks like it has a place here to put some read-only memories of your own. Different jumpers will need to figure out what they do. And you could use this machine with an M-size style front panel, although this machine obviously doesn't have one. And the remaining card we have here I is... Am. Honestly, don't see the point of using an M side front panel considering we've got, you know, a full on keyboard and text yeah, interface. Yeah, I think at this point you would only use that M side front panel for debugging purposes. If you had one, you could debug one of the cards. You could debug the card with this. Anyway, uh, let's see. Oh, we've got another memory card. Uh, basically the same as this card with different settings on the switches. Do you know where all these cards go? go like can you plug them back into where yeah well actually were? the way that this is set up is that the various cards on the s100 bus you can plug them in in any order really yeah oh here's a place where it looks like maybe i can test if i can get a probe in there i could test the power supply i mean we can always get a probe in there oh well now here's something interesting this is plus five plus twelve oh you know what the board is using the plus five and the plus 12 here and stuff for the circuitry back here because that's 100 bus itself has plus minus 16 and plus eight volts unregulated from the main power supply. But here I see plus five and plus 12. So this must be something separate. What, do you th what does it mean if it's unregulated? Uh, it means that the voltage is kind of loosey goosey. It could be within a range around there and you would need to regulate the power supply to make sure you have a fixed voltage. And to make sure the entire computer doesn't go up in flames. 
Well, not so much the flames, but not work in a consistent way. If you notice each of these cards, see these things with the large heat sink? Those are voltage regulators. And the way the voltage regulator like this works, a linear voltage regulator, you need to give it a voltage that's higher than the voltage you want. So that's why plus eight can get regulated down to plus five, plus 18 can get regulated down to plus 12 or whatever else. And so you'll see each card is responsible for doing its own voltage regulation. So you'll see like that. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is try to test the voltages on the power here. And this time I'm gonna be careful not to short things out and blow stuff up, but test the voltages here to make sure they're reasonable and then plug things back in. Oh, although... I'd better get the multimeter and maybe a fire extinguisher. Although I... <laughs> Although really, if I want to protect these chips from any bad things happening in the power supply, I should unplug these things first. Yeah, you should. You should. Okay, here we go. Okay, confession time. While well, pulling these various power supply connections out to test the power supply separately from the rest of the board, I yanked this out of its crimp socket. <laughs> so I don't actually have one of these sitting around, so I wound up kind of make it a little jank connection. I did solder this in, which you're not supposed to do, but whatever, it should work. It's the electrical hazard song. We've got this thing plugged in and it's currently open. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, actually. There's 120 volts. Crikey. Okay, that's some kind of reset switch. Careful, Dad, careful. Is that on? Is that off? What is that supposed to be? It's supposed to be. This is a very foolhardy idea. Hmm. Fan does not spin. Hmm. I mean, is the fan supposed to spin on startup? Oh, wait a minute. Are we missing a fuse? There, you know, that's it. probably it. Guess what, everybody? This here's the fuse. This here's the fuse hole. But where's the fuse cap? We don't have one. Or actually, this is a random fuse. We would want to look to make sure we have the right fuse. Yeah. But yeah, it's missing the fuse cap. Fun. It came like that. Okay, so we now need to go on a fuse cap hunt. To eBay! Okay. 